A relationship with the right referral partner could be a game changer for any B2B company. So what if you could reverse engineer these relationships at a moment's notice? Start a podcast, invite potential referral partners to be guests on your show, and grow your referral network faster than ever. Learn more at sweetfishmedia.com. You're listening to the B2B Growth Show, a podcast dedicated to helping B2B executives achieve explosive growth. Whether you're looking for techniques and strategies or tools and resources, you've come to the right place. I'm James Carberry. And I'm Jonathan Green. Let's get into the show. This episode is sponsored by Directive Consulting, the B2B search marketing agency. Welcome back to another episode of B2B Growth. We are here today with me, myself, and I. Uh, my name is James Carberry. I'm one of the co-hosts of B2B Growth and going to switch it up a little bit. I usually save my solo episodes for the weekend, but I called an audible and decided that I wanted to do this episode during the week. Uh, if you're new to the show, this is not normal. During the week, we usually do interviews with VPs of marketing, CMOs, CEOs at fast-growing B2B companies. Uh, but I recently, uh, or not recently, I'm, I'm in the midst of reading a book right now that is blowing my mind. Uh, the book is called Never Lose a Customer Again, uh, and it's all about the customer experience. And it's written by a guy named Joey Coleman. I'm listening to it on Audible right now. Uh, so if you are, are if you're a book reader or a book listener at all, you should absolutely go and download this book, Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. Uh, and early in the book, like I said, I haven't finished the book yet, but I'm I'm pretty early. I was headed to a B2B growth dinner uh, in Atlanta recently and on the flight up there, I was listening to this part of the book where Joey outlines the eight phases of the customer experience. And so I want to dedicate this episode to what the eight phases of the customer experience are. And he prefaces up until this point of, of talking about you know all the resources that we have at our disposal related to sales and marketing. I mean, this podcast is one of them. This podcast is all about B2B marketing. But he says there's so little resources around retaining customers, delighting existing customers so that they continue to pay us over and over again. And if we focused on the customer experience more and created more process system infrastructure around keeping customers, our businesses would grow exponentially. So I think for a show titled B2B Growth, talking about customer experience and the importance of customer experience is necessary. And so I'm going to be going over the eight phases of the customer experience in this episode. The first phase that Joey outlines uh, in, in the customer experience is assess. He calls it the, the assess phase. And this is when the customer is deciding if they want to do business with you. Now, this is kind of, this is sales and marketing, right? Like as, as we are, uh, as we're interacting with potential customers throughout the sales process, they are assessing whether they, uh, whether they want to do, to do business with you. One of the questions that Joey asks later in the book and related to the assess phase, it, he, he challenges the reader to ask themselves when prospects review our marketing materials, do they get a good idea of what their experience is going to be like once they become customers? How will they feel when doing business with you? And I thought, man, that he's got a bunch of other questions that you should ask yourself to see if, if you are really nailing the assess phase. But that one stood out to me because I thought, man, we, we could create a lot more collateral that communicates to our potential buyers, potential customers, what are they going to feel like whenever they uh, whenever they become a customer of ours? And so, in our context, we you know we obviously produce podcasts for companies, but a huge aspect of our service is repurposing that podcast content into content that performs extremely well on LinkedIn. And so we've got we've gotten some incredible results where we, when one of our customers in the first six months of their podcast has got two point five million views on their LinkedIn content. And that content was repurposed by our writing team and, and written in a way that performs really well on LinkedIn. And then we distribute it through our engagement groups. But we don't ha we, we have a case study that kind of explains that. But 
Uh, I can only imagine if we, if we can figure out whether it's a video or some sort of audio piece of content that where the host is explaining kind of the, what it felt like for him to have a piece of content on LinkedIn, you know, get you know tens of thousands of views without actually having to create it himself, aside from you know doing the podcast interview, uh, the the episode on his show, and then just looking up and having having a post do so well that he did nothing except talking to a mic and then it magically transformed into a really incredible piece of content on LinkedIn. Uh, that would be an example of what I could do to help the assess phase of our customer experience um, it, it, to create an asset that, that, that does that, that accomplishes that. Uh, so, so assess is really sales and marketing. What, what, uh, what are you doing as an organization to uh, to help the customer decide if they want to do business with you? I mean, you there's we could go on and on about this, but that's essentially the first phase of customer experience. The second phase is what Joey calls admit. And this is when the customer admits that they have a problem and they believe you can solve it. So this is the quote unquote sale. What is happening? What as you assess your buyer's experience. What happens when that sale takes place? Do they, you know, do you do you send a bouquet of balloons to their office, uh, letting them know how you know how how excited you are with us? Uh, this is something we ha- have done in the past. We're starting to do it again. Uh, as soon as the sale happens, uh, we are sending. A, a really a welcome video, customized welcome video to new customers to basically say, you know, from from a handful of people on our team, not the entire team, but a handful of folks that they'll be working with, you know, a writer, one of our account managers, uh, myself, Jonathan, uh, will we'll send a video to basically say, you know, hey, so-and-so, we're, you know, we're, we're excited to work with you. Welcome, you know, welcome aboard. Uh, and, and so, We've we got when we did it in the past, we got incredible response to that. Uh, and so, as soon as a customer admits they have a problem and they believe you can solve it, uh, what are you doing? How are you designing that experience to make it memorable for the buyer? So we have assess is phase one. We have admit is phase two, and we have phase three, which is affirm. And this is. Uh, this phase, Joey talks a lot about buyer's remorse. What are you doing to combat buyer's remorse? So as soon as someone makes, particularly in a B two B context, uh, you know, a you know, could, this could be a six or seven figure decision. They've they've chosen you as their vendor of choice or their agency or, or whatever it is that you're going to deliver. Is there something that you can bake into your experience to combat that? inevitable buyer's remorse. Man, we just committed to to giving these guys, you know, $1.3 million over the next uh, you know, 24 months. Oh, was that the right call? Am I gonna get fired for this? Uh so maybe that's a a series of uh you know, I don't know if that's a series of emails that you send to brand new customers. Uh, you know, showcasing kind of what what the next steps are, uh, what you know, h- how the process is going to go. Uh, Joey is a big. Uh, Joey talks a lot about how you have 100 days. The first 100 days of your uh, of of your new customer's journey are absolutely pivotal. And so, uh, so whenever they uh, whenever they admit they have a problem, they've committed to the sale. Uh, then, then you need to affirm them because they are inevitably going to have buyer's remorse. So that is phase three. Phase four, uh, Joey calls activate. And this is the first major post-sale interaction. So in our context, whenever we bring on a new customer, our first major post-sale interaction is our kickoff call. There's a couple things that happen before that. Uh, you know, Jonathan from our team hops on a quick, like, little five minute call to just make sure that you know he's on the same page uh, with the person that that, that that sold this, which is typically me, um, to make sure that you know there's there's a synergy and and you know that what I communicated to uh, the the new customer isn't completely off base from uh, from what you know Jonathan's expecting going into it. But the first major post sale interaction is our kickoff call. And one thing that we have done as an organization to really try to create an incredible experience inside of that kickoff call 
is we we do uh, we do a, a bit of research going into that call, and we offer up uh, a list of potential names for uh, you know for our our uh, new customers podcast. Now this is this is a very emotional thing, right? Because the name of your podcast is so huge, and we don't tell customers that hey, we're going to come in with names. We we kind of frame the kickoff calls. Hey, we're going to talk through how we want to brand the show. But by coming up with a list of names and by actually writing out a potential iTunes description, uh, you know, it's by no means set in stone and, and often, you know, gets adjusted uh, down the road throughout the launch process. But by wowing them with having a list of, really incredible potential names for the show, as well as an iTunes description, they in their head can see, oh man, this is, this is going to be a real thing. This is exciting. Uh, and so we are activating our new customers in this first major post sales interaction. Uh, we're, we're, we're hopefully alleviating some buyer's remorse in that action as well. Um, you know, so leading into that call, we have them fill out a uh, a, a short survey to tell to make sure the rest of our team understands you know, the nuances of of the type of customers they serve and and all of that stuff. So they so they fill out that and then uh, and then that positions us really well to be able to come up with some incredible names for their show and a potential iTunes subscription. So that is how we are activating new customers. It's story time, and this growth story is about search engine marketing. Okay, so the story revolves around eSub, a project management SaaS company specifically for subcontractors. Even though eSub had incredible customer attention, they struggled with growth. Being a niche service, they discovered that there was little demand expressed for their solutions within search engines. To take on this challenge, eSub hired Directive Consulting, the B2B search marketing agency. After refining targeting, pre-qualifying clicks with an ad copy, and developing custom landing pages, Directive was able to increase eSub's marketing qualified leads by 71% while decreasing their cost per lead by 65%. I have a hunch that Directive can get these kind of results for you too. So head over to directiveconsulting.com and request a totally free custom proposal. That's directiveconsulting.com. All right. Let's get back to this interview. The fifth phase is what Joey calls acclimate. Uh, this is when customers grow comfortable with your way of doing business. So in our context, you know, we use a lot of tools to make sure that, uh, that the workflow of a weekly or sometimes daily show that we're doing for our customers goes smoothly. And so we're having to, you know, have them use tools like Uber Conference for for the recording of their episodes or Trello to to manage the workflow. What we're using to manage the workflow. So there's a lot of different tools that they need to get acclimated with. They need to be comfortable with uh, because that's how we do business. That's how we execute our service. And so we are actually in the process now of coming up with some video content that walks them through in a, in a real quick, fun way to just say, Hey, this is, this is what it's going to look like. This is how we use the tool. This is how we'd like you to engage with the tool as well. So the fifth stage of the customer experience is acclimate. What are you doing to acclimate your customers so that they grow comfortable with the way that you do business? The sixth phase of the eight phases of customer experience is accomplish. And this is when the customer achieves the goal they desired when they made the purchase. So we, I think we've still got a lot of room to grow here. One of the things that we do, uh, a, a big accomplishment in podcasting is to get to episode seven because only, you know, I think it's 90, I think the stat is 90% of podcasts never make it to episode seven. And so we design a custom graphic for each of our customers show that they can use on social, uh, wherever, uh, that basically says we made it, uh, you know, 90% of, of podcasts never make it to episode seven, but uh, we did. And so whenever uh, they, they can, they can use that graphic as a promotion piece for that episode. And it's a surprise and delight for them. I think we can do I think for us personally as a business, there's some room for us to grow with 
of how are we celebrating the accomplishment of their first post that gets over 10,000 views on LinkedIn, uh, you know, would, would be something that, uh, that, that we can think through. Uh, but what are you doing as, as a business to celebrate, uh, your customer achieving the goal that they desired when they made the decision to work with you, when they made their purchase with you. The seventh phase of the customer experience is adopt. Now, this is when the customer takes ownership of the relationship. And this is a, you know, this is, this is something that I think um, is, I, I'm really excited to get to this part of the book uh, because there, I just think there are a host of possibilities of things that you can do here uh, to, to capitalize on the fact that your customer is now owning uh, owning the relationship, they're comfortable working with you. They're they're acclimated to your way of doing business. They've they've reached that first accomplishment, and now they've just adopted you as their as their go to service, their go to product for uh, achieving that result. Uh, so excited to dive into that. Don't have a lot to say there because I haven't got to that part of the book. But the the eighth phase is something I hear a lot of folks talking about. So I'll supplement what I say to this eighth phase eighth phase based on some of the other things that I've heard about it, but this eighth phase of customer experience is advocate. Now, this is when the customer becomes a raving fan, a zealous promoter, and a referral partner for your business. So we have a few advocates in our business that are just incredible uh, partners for us. They, they, you know, I was just listening to a podcast episode the other day where one of our advocates was, you know, she was asked, who, uh, you know, who is doing the best job of content marketing in the B2B space right now? Uh, and, uh, and, and our advocate said us, you know, us, and then actually one of our customers. I mean, that's, that's huge when you have somebody, uh, you know, she's, she's a customer and, uh, and, and she's speaking so highly of us, uh, on, on other podcasts that she's on, she has already referred, you know, two pieces of business to us, uh, and, and so we've, we've got some things lined up for kind of how we want to care for her, what we want to do, uh, to, to really celebrate her. So a lot of it is, uh, you know, in, in encompassed in some gifts. We've also, you know, included this person in an in-person dinner that we did, uh, when we, when we went to, uh, when we went to Boston, we, we made sure that, uh, you know, we actually had a few, uh, a few different advocates at that dinner, but, uh, maintaining the relationship with those advocates is so clutch uh, if if you want them to continue advocating for you and and I cannot communicate the benefit that uh, that we have seen from having true advocates that are in our corner talking about us on social talking about us when they're being interviewed on podcasts um, and so having a well thought out strategy and plan for how do we care for our advocates I know there's there are software tools that that allow you to do this, but I, I think taking a critical look at what do we do with advocates? How do we how do we continue to uh, in in you know add value to them, make their lives better, uh, and and how do we you know continue to uh, you know really love them well so that they continue to you know bring bring all the benefits to us that come from having strong, strong advocates. So these are the eight phases of the customer experience. Number one is assess. Number two is admit. Number three is affirm. Number four is activate. Number five is acclimate. Number six, accomplish. Number seven, adopt. And number eight, advocate. I hope this has been a extremely valuable episode for you. I hope it's given you uh, some, uh, some things to think about in terms of what you can do to enhance your customer's experience. Again, go check out the book, Never Lose a Customer Again by Joey Coleman. I'm listening to it right now on Audible, so it is available on Audible. You're clearly a podcast listener, so if you if you would rather uh, listen to your content instead of read it, go check it out there. Or if you like reading books, you can uh, you can check it out on Amazon. And I, I don't know if it's in, uh, in Barnes & Noble and all that stuff, but not that anybody buys books at Barnes & Noble anymore anyway. <laughs> but uh, check out the book, Never Lose a Customer Again, Joey Coleman. Uh, hope this is helpful. Thanks a lot. There are lots of ways to build a community. And we've chosen to build the B2B growth community through this podcast. 
But because of the way podcasts work, it's really hard to engage with our listeners. And without engagement, it's tough to build a great community. So here's what we've decided to do. We're organizing small dinners across the country with our listeners and guests. No sales pitches, no agenda, just great conversations with like-minded people. We'll talk business, we'll talk family, we'll talk goals and dreams, we'll build friendships. So if you'd like to be a part of a B2B Growth Dinner in a city near you, go to b2bgrowthdinners.com. That's b2bgrowthdinners.com. Thank you so much for listening. Until next time.